Hey everyone and welcome to this lecture of the principle of mathematical induction. In this topic we will talk about the basis of mathematical induction and we will talk about deduction as well. And after setting up the basic rules and premises of mathematical induction we will go through some examples to apply what we have learned in this lecture. Now the thing about this topic is that this is less rigorous and less technical than the topics that we have already covered. It is more of a logical and a philosophical uh, topic. In this, what we are basically trying to do is make sense of the things that we have already done. Like after we do something, we basically examine it, examine it from this point of view that what have we done? Rather than just trying to find out the answer and move some stuff around and doing some additions and subtractions, after doing that, we will try to find out what we have done. What have we induced? How have we induced the answer? Or have we deduced the answer from something? So it is basically going to be a description of everything that we have done so far. Uh, of course, we know we won't be using the topics that we already covered. We will be using uh, the new topics and basically new examples for this lecture. So in this lecture, you won't be seeing your typical questions that you have already covered or typical questions that you already see. Like you won't have to find out uh, the circumference of a circle or you won't have to find out the area. You won't have to find out different equations. You would basically have to deduce. You would basically have to derive this. Now, when you talk about derivations, what students usually do is that they uh, basically just wrote learn the derivations. But if you concentrate on this topic of mathematical induction, you would be able to induce different principles basis, uh, based on the facts that you have available to you. So uh, all of this will make sense to you once we get into it. So let's start now. Basically, if you look at this paragraph over here, and I, and I will explain to you after I read it out, that in al algebra or in other disciplines of math, there are certain results or statements that are formulated in terms of n. Now, n over here is basically a positive integer. Now, to prove such statements, a well-suited principle that is used to base on a specific technique is known as the principle of mathematical induction. That what this uh, paragraph in front of you is basically saying is that there are certain results and statements that are true in, on the basis of n, that is any positive integer, which we have been covering so far. Now, in order to prove that the, these statements are true, in order to prove the statements is true, in order to just prove the statement, you would basically have to have a principle to do that, and that principle is known as a mathematical induction. Now, what are the principles of mathematical induction in itself? Of course, we already know that what mathematical we already uh, went through what mathematical induction is, how this is used, but what are the principles of those induction, of that induction? The principle of mathematical induction is one such tool which can be used to provide a vari wide variety of mathematical statements. Each such statement is, is assumed as p of n. Now, p of n is any statement that is true for a positive integer of n. Now, for which the correctness of the case n is equal to 1 is examined. Now, what this line basically means is that we are trying to find out whether this p of n is true or not. And for that, we use n is equal to 1 because it is a positive integer. It has to be true for a positive integer. And you can't say in this case that there are exceptions that it is true for some positive integers and it's not for others. Of course, there are questions related to that as well. There are scenarios and cases related to that as well. But we won't be concentrating on that right now because we are just starting with the principle of the mathematical induction. Then, assuming the truth for P of K, now this is another positive integer, then we try to find out the truth for P K plus 1. Now, what that means is that if you have any, uh, basically, statement P, and you are trying to prove it for any positive integer k, you also have to prove it for k plus 1. If you are trying to prove it for k is equal to 1, it also has to be true for k is equal to 2, because that is k plus 1 means. If you look at this uh, expression over here, it's not saying p k plus 1. It is basically saying p of k plus 1. So basically, 1 is being added to the positive integer k, not to the whole uh, truth that is known as p. Now, let's move on. Now, this is how we're going to do it in a step-by-step -step fashion. There is a given statement P of n involving natural numbers. Now, the statement is true for n is equal to 1, that is P of 1 is true. This already we have went through, right? So, if the statement is true for k, n is equal to k, where k is some positive integer, which we went through, which was the second thing that we uh, saw in the second slide, then the statement is also true 
so n is equal to k plus 1 the truth basically is being established by p of k plus 1 so there's nothing different from this in the first and the second state but the only thing different is that rather than uh, there being n over here p of n we change it with another uh, positive integer that is k so k will become n like it is st stated over here now then it has to be true for any other one integer that is k and it also has to be true for k plus 1 if that is the case if you are able to prove this basically the second statement then you would induce that p of n is true for all natural numbers which are represented by n and n could be k and then it could be replaced by k plus 1 now before we move on to induction we i would like to talk a bit about deduction the thing about deduction is i mean you can read it from the slide in front of you but i will just tell you what it really means by the help of an example uh, in uh, of course this is also what it means i will tell you in uh, easy in an easy language what basically it means is that you have a generalized statement that is true any generalized statement that is true and if you apply that generalized statement to a specific uh, scenario then you have basically done the process of deduction so this is how it states it's over here generalization for specific instances for example let's just see this example over here now this is basically one two three this goes by step by step it is not three different these are three different statements but these are interrelated let's just say eight is divisible by two we know that it is so from this we deduce that any number which is divisible by two is an even number we know this now since that is the case we can now easily say eight is an even number we have basically deduced this and this is a really basic example i'm trying to get across you another thing that i can tell you is like in, in a normal uh, life humans every human being will pass away right john is a human john will pass away that's why john is a human being of course you don't have to write a uh, human being right basically i'm trying to tell you how you deduce stuff so if you look at this process of reduction you're already doing that the only thing is now you're getting a big becoming aware of the deduction that you're doing you're already doing that through step-by-step -step process if this is a scenario if this particular uh, value represents this then that would mean that this is the shape and through that we can get this so this basically is the process of deduction that you have already been doing now let's talk about induction a bit now let's i will introduce the term to you term induction to you to understand an induction, let's just suppose you have a set of dominoes. Uh, so we know that if you have a set of dominoes, if you basically touch one domino and if you push one domino, all the other dominoes will fall. So over here it is represented as the tile. When the first tile is pushed in the in indicated direction, the first tile falls, that is the domino, right? In the event that any tile falls, the successor will necessarily fall. So basically you're inducing that one follows the other one of the scenarios that you use induction in your daily life is like for example if you take an exam and you know that the passing rate is 50 so if you have 51 out of 100 and you know that since i have 51 out of 100 i'm pass because the passing rate was 50 and then you deduce that anyone who would have more than me that is anyone who would have more than 51 would also get a passing grade because since i have already have a passing grade and anyone would more than me would also have a passing grade because 50 is the passing grade so through this you are basically into uh, using induction now using principles of mathematical induction these are the questions that you would have to solve statements giving expressions about summation or multiplication of special series statements to show the divisibility of an expression by a certain natural number and statements containing signs of inequality these are the three types of questions that you would have to solve using mathematical induction now let's look at the first type of questions for example if you have a statement in front of you which says that for all n that is greater than n equals to one for all natural numbers that are greater than n equals to one prove that 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up to wherever you want to go. All, that is why it shows these dots and then plus n square that any natural number square is going to be basically n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6. So this is this is the thing that you have to prove and this is the basically the basis, this is the stuff that you have to work with. So in order to solve this one, uh, what we have to do is we have to go for the simplest method. 
the simplest way the simplest natural integer so we talked about in the definition of mathematical induction that we would be using n is equals to 1 and that is exactly what we would do rather than thinking that going from m1 square plus 2 square 3 square 4 square all the way up to let's just say 17 square you don't have to do that you just n could be 1 as well like if, if it is 2 we wanted to prove it for any integer so we can prove it for 1 and that is what we were talking about in mathematical induction if it has to be 2 for 1 it will be 2 for all the others as well so rather than using 1 2 3 4 and then any other thing like just say 5 you would just start with 1 and end over there because it has to be 2 as well because this has to be 2 right so we would use 1 over here now if we plug in 1 in this value over here we're going to get 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 into 1 plus 1 over 6 and the answer we're going to get is equals to 1 that is the correct answer if you look at it what we basically we've basically done over here is that we used one square over here on the left hand side right and that was our n because it goes all the way up to n square and we started from one and we ended over there right because we want to use the simplest case we want to induce it mathematically we want this is a principle that we discussed and then we plugged in one in the other uh, on the right hand side and we got one is equal to one so that is how this is proof proved now there's another thing that we discussed that we also have to prove this for k. Now for k, what do what do, what was the first first step to prove it for k? The first step to prove it for k was that in in the where we are using n, we would use k. So you basically plug in k over here. There's nothing different with that other than n. You're going to get a k. So it's n n plus one two n plus one over six. Or here you're going to get k k plus one two k plus one over six. Now there was a third thing as well that we had to do and if we are, if we are done that if this theorem is proven through the third thing as well then we can safely prove that this is right that this is actually proven for all natural numbers and that is we have to now prove it for k plus 1. For that we have to do some sort of simplifying and some sort of factorization. Now in order to prove it is true for k, one, k plus 1 this series is basically going to become this. Once we all the way up to k square because we are using k instead of n and then k plus 1 whole square. Now we know this equation number 1 is that we use this as equation number 1. We are going to add k plus 1 to this. k plus 1 whole square of course because this is square. It has to go all the way up to here. So we write it down as k into k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 over 6 plus k plus 1 whole square. And we, because it, the denominator is 6 over here, we use it for uh, adding this term and we get 6 into k plus 1 whole square. Now, this is a jump that we have made in the slide, but I would like you to, if you can do the calculations, if you, do, if you can do the simplifications, it, this is a very long statement and you need to simplify it and it's going to become this. After this becomes k plus 1, 2k plus 7k plus 6 over 6 after you do this of course you we would see where did the square go the square is still there we just uh, didn't solve it because we made it into two different parts that is k plus k plus 1 over here and 2 and 1k is over here so if you multiply this you're going to get k square so if you do that then you would simplify it and you would get this answer k plus 1 into k plus 1 plus 1 into 2k plus 1 plus 1 uh, over 6 what this basically means is that you're going to get instead of every place where you had an n or where you had a k you're basically going to get a k plus one if you look at the original uh, statement that we were going out to prove uh, this was n into n plus one two n plus one by six and then it became k into k plus one two k plus one plus six now it should have been k plus one the first term for this k over here this, that is exactly what it is k plus one and then k plus 1 plus 1 because you know rather than k over here we're going to write k plus 1 this is exactly what we get over here k plus 1 plus 1 and for the third term in, in 2k plus 1 we're going to get 2 being multiplied by k plus 1 plus 1 and that is what we're going to get over here 2k plus 1 plus 1 over 6 so this is we have proven that this is how uh, basically this is now proven that from the principle of mathematical mathematic relation that the statement is true for all natural numbers of n. Why for all natural numbers of n? Because we have proven it for p of n and we have proven it for p uh, k plus 1. And of course when n became k there was no point to prove it again for k because that would have been the same thing as before just the a variable just a legible symbol that we use that is n and k would be different. And then when we have proven this for k plus 1 
then we can know we can know that the natural number it is proven it is true for all natural numbers now i know this is this is this is different from what we have studied so far or any math that you've done so far but it is really simple and it's really straightforward you're just trying to prove the statements to rather than calculate and show you're trying to prove it and in order to prove it we use mathematical induction and there are just two things to it one thing is you prove it for p of n where n is equals to 1 and you use n so that we can use the simplest of natural numbers to uh, justify our answer and then we use it to just then we make the n uh, into k and then we prove it for n uh, k plus 1 sorry not n k plus 1 and if we have proven it for p of n and p of k plus 1 then we can know that the statement is true for all natural numbers and if if it is not proven then of course we would know that it is not uh, true for all natural numbers so it's pretty straightforward i know it's a bit different but it still is straightforward so uh, we will be continuing this for the next two lectures as well because this requires a bit of time and uh, hopefully i'll see you then thank you